Hey guys, it's Dorian, and this is another Dorian.slash vlog, or vlog, what have you. Uh, two things I want to talk about today. Uh, first of all, Ubuntu 18.04 is coming out soon, codenamed Bionic Beaver, and it's going to come out with a new data collection policy. I talked about it in a news post that I posted on OSDN. I'll get to OSDN in a second as well, but I've posted basically what the gist is of it. And I've got some references with some of the emails and uh, sources. So basically what's going on is as of 18.04, Ubuntu will start collecting data from its users. Now, I want to be clear that this has not been officially announced that this will be for sure. It could change before it comes out. Uh, but basically right now it is a opt out. Um, so, okay. Opt out, opt in and opt out. I'm going to explain. First of all, this only affects users who are installing Ubuntu from scratch for the first time. You're going to have all these options as you're setting up. One will be that by default, the option or the check box or whatever it will be, will be on stating that Ubuntu can collect information from your system. Now, it's not a huge deal, as I've said in my little blog online here, this is the kind of stuff that is going to be collected. So the flavor and version of Ubuntu, if you have network connectivity, CPU, family, RAM, screen resolution, location. Now location is not based on your IP. It's based on the selection that you made when you installed. So if you click on Venezuela, and you're actually in Germany, well, it'll go up to the servers saying that you're in Venezuela. Not that you're in Venezuela, but that's what you picked. So you can pick whatever you want. Uh, there's no IP information. There's nothing that personally identifies you in this. Uh, how long it took for installation, if you enabled auto login, what your disk layout is. Now this, I still think it, it's not a big deal because they have no idea what's on the disks. It's basically going to be what your drive layout looks like, your disk layout. Um, whether you checked off third-party software or not, if you decided to download or not, and if live patch is enabled or not. So these are all things that are specific to Ubuntu only. Nothing about you, not your username or anything is listed here. So why are they doing this? Well, if I've, I've read comments, people saying, well, Linux has been around for decades and they've never collected data. Well, the breadth of hardware nowadays, the variety of hardware available nowadays is exponentially bigger than what was available 10, 20 years ago. Uh, not only the types of processors and the types of hardware, but the vendors of each one uh, rebranded hardware that's, you know, purchased by one company, they throw their name on it and they sell it under their name. And, you know, there's far too much for Ubuntu to keep up. So all this really is in the end to make a better product, figure out what users are doing, what you're using, how you're configuring your installation and etc. Uh, if you're upgrading from a previous version to 18.04, this will not be enabled. This is only for new installations, as in you pop in your USB or your DVD and you say wipe my drive and you just install from scratch. Now, is it a big deal? Well, really it should be opt-in. And there's some confusion that I've read on the internet. Opt-in would mean that it tells you 
you can check this box or click this button to enable data collection if you wish. Now, if you ignore it or you don't see that option and you just hit next, 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 like many of us do, you're, you're not going to accidentally enable the data collection. Because it's an opt out, that means by default, that little checkbox is turned on or the switch or whatever is turned on and you have to do something to turn it off. So this is a matter of bad practice, I suppose. They're not being malicious. They're not trying to collect your data, your personal data. They're trying to collect what system you're running, basically. Uh, is it bad? I don't think so. Should it be this way? I don't think so. Is it a huge deal? I don't know. A lot of people have different opinions. Personally, I think that it should be disabled by default and you should have to turn it on. Is it a big deal if it's on? No. Am I going to turn it on on my systems? Probably. As long as this is really what's being collected, then I don't really care. And that's the beauty about Linux and open source is people are going to dig through all the source code and see exactly what is being sent to the servers. You could also do the same thing with Wireshark and all kinds of other utilities to find out what's being sent to the servers, but there's no way for them to really hide this. So I don't think they're being malicious at all. Uh, and I've posted this onto the OSDN Scion Linux project page. Now, okay, before I get to that, why did I do that? Well, because Scion Linux is built on the Ubuntu base. The core of Ubuntu is uh, the core of Scion Linux. It's all built on top of it. So does that mean that Scion Linux will be whatever Ubuntu is? No. And I want to make that very clear now. You will not be automatically installed or automatically included in this data collection. No matter what Ubuntu does, uh, I will make sure in the next version of Scion Linux, which will be based on Ubuntu 18.04, that it will definitely be an opt-in option, as in you will have to turn it on and know that you're turning it on if you want to be part of the data collection. Hopefully there's no kind of agreement or anything for any children distros of Ubuntu where they force you to not bypass this ability. If that is the case, then it will be made very, very clear during installation that you are to turn it off if you wish to. It'll be very clear. I'm not going to do any kind of tricks with Scion. There's not going to be, it's not going to be an opt out. It'll for sure, for sure be an opt in. So when you install it, you have to turn it on. Again, if that's breaking some rules that Ubuntu or Canonical comes out with, then I will make it very, very clear that if you do not want to do it, that you can turn it off. All right. So that's that. So why is this on OSDN and what is OSDN? Well, as you may know, if you follow me on Twitter and possibly in some of my vlogs, I probably mentioned it, that SourceForge for over two weeks now has been up and down and up and down. And it's just been an absolute nightmare. I haven't, I hadn't been able to update any of the forums or blog or wiki or anything. I hadn't been able to upload anything and it was just, it was just a nightmare. Uh, and they kept on saying on Twitter that it's being fixed, it's being fixed, it's almost done, and over two and a half weeks passed, and it was just, I got fed up. I was approached by the founder and CEO of OSDN and asked to check it out. OSDN uh, was previously SourceForge.jp out of Japan, and they've branched off or forked, if you will, and became their own thing. It's the open source developers network. It's very, very similar to SourceForge. It has a lot of the same features, but it has a lot more, I think. Um, so 
yeah, you've got like description, you click more and system requirements. You, you have your install here. You can click on that and it'll show you installation instructions, usage instructions, I'll close that. Downloads are right here. I got screenshots right here and you go here to the releases and the releases are all right here by version and click on that it's got project description release notes change log it's it's really nice i like it a lot it's got a good ticket system it also has a wiki uh, it has a forum uh, it has the news feed which is where i posted that uh scion on ubuntu's data collection policy uh, so yeah, little news articles here and also kind of cool. They have an ability to run your own little website here with a shorter URL. So scionlinux.osdn.io. So I just slapped something together in a text editor here that uh, just shows, you know, something basic just to have something there just so that, you know, it's not blank because basically it was just a, a template saying put your website here so that's kind of neat so this is a, a, a simpler version where you can click on downloads it takes you to the download list and etc so really really like osdn i'm slowly dismantling everything on sourceforge i've taken down almost everything so far i've left some of the files but I took away the source code folders and I took away the themes folder. So right now it's just the original ISOs. And over on OSDN, I will be adding the source code, the source code for the apps that I've written, the control panel and everything. And I'll be re-adding the themes and the artwork and everything on here so that everything is open source completely. You can look at all the source code that I've written and it's open source. I mean, you, you'll be able to go on here and see how I wrote the control panel. You could change it. You could do whatever. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to set up the Git as well so that uh, people can contribute to the source code, make their own changes and whatnot and we'll go from there. So yeah, SourceForge is going bye-bye and it's all gonna be on OSDN from now on. And this is interim until I get my own domain and server and hosting. And yeah, so that's that. That's what's going on with Ubuntu's data collection and that's what's going on with the website. And finally, what's going on with Scion itself is, uh, oh, that was the screensaver. Um, this is Mercury. This is a pre-Mercury. I'm working with Ubiquity, which is the installer, which isn't super user-friendly, but that's fine. And I've made some changes, like I got rid of Terminator, and I'll be using XFCE terminal instead. Uh, it's, it's lighter and doesn't use Python as a um, interpreter. It doesn't run through Python. It's, it's its own executable. So it runs a little quicker. The updater, I've done a couple of things to improve notifications. I still have to get around to making the icon change when it's doing things, but it will eventually and the control panel. Um, there's a couple of things I'm going to be adding here. I'm, I'm reworking the design as well. I'm thinking of making it a scrolling window, but I'm not sure yet. And the version here gets actually pulled from the system. It used to be hard coded, but with different versions, now it'll, it'll detect what it's running on and display it. And the finally, the leave panel, I've just done a little bit of tweaking with transparency and colors and whatnot to get it to look nicer. And I'm thinking of redoing these icons because uh, I did them really quick and they work, but I don't know. If anybody is interested in contributing to some 
open box themes or some different backgrounds or something. If you're into graphics, uh, if you want to contribute, you know, let me know. I mean, I'm open to whatever. Uh, oh, and I changed the, the theme, the default theme for uh, the dock for Plank. <clears throat> this isn't the background I'm going to be going with. I've just, I was just changing the background around. If, um, yeah, it, whatever. I'm just playing with backgrounds. I'm going to be making an, a completely new background for 18.3 anyways. Um, yeah, and the, the theme here, it used to be this, which was kind of dark and kind of basic. And I changed it to shade. Looks a little nicer. Same icon theme, same, uh, actually, no, not the same window theme. It's a theme that was included, but I'll just go to, where am I going? Here. It was originally this one with the small little buttons. And I had a couple of comments saying people like the bigger one. So it's exactly the same, it's just bigger. So I changed that. And just minor little things, cleaning up. Uh, I removed the clipboard manager and yeah, a couple of little things here and there, just tweaking. The biggest thing is getting ubiquity to work properly, the installer, and have the boot parameters passed properly because I want some legacy ACPI support for laptops and computers. I also want, I also want it to work with the new stuff. So it's I'm running on kernel 4.13 now instead of 4.4. And yeah, well, that's it for now. And that's my that's my spiel on the whole data collection policy thing. Uh, I have some other things to talk about, but I'm going to save that for another video. Uh, one is Ubuntu's snaps. I'm uh, not too sure what to think of snaps, but I'll, I'll get on that. And as always, don't forget to follow me over on Twitter at Dorian.slash, where I post up you know, random things, what's going on. And don't forget to hit subscribe and hit the like button. And that's all I got for now. Thanks for watching. And until next time, bash on.